Welcome back to the shop, everybody. I'm getting super excited. We got Castle Creation products to throw in my favorite truck, Losi DBXL 2.0. So my goal for this truck is to make it to 104 mile per hour off road. Uh, last video, we fit up the Badlands. Also, we got this new motor mount. Uh, it's for a version one Losi DBXL. Uh, it fits bigger pinions on it. Right now we have a 24T pinion on there. It's pretty big. We also got a 30T pinion coming in the mail from Sega, which is massive. And then also a 46T spur so we could drop down the center diff gear ratio. Um, if you missed that last video where we hit 70 mile per hour off-road with stock electronics, the link is down in the description. And all these parts that I'm going that's going into this build, the Badlands, the Castle Creation products, the Sega Custom Gears, all that will be down in the description. So we got XLX2, my favorite speedrun ESC. This is my third one. We got one in the limitless, one in the infraction. And then I've been wanting to try out this motor, one fifth scale motor. It's the new 2028 1100 KV motor. It's almost double KV of this. Well, not really. This is only 780 KV, so we're definitely stepping it up. Just to test this out in this video, after I fit all the electronics, we're probably going to drop back down to 18T. I heard this is a good basher for this motor, a good basher gear. So we'll test it out, see how fast it goes with that, and then we'll start gearing it up in the next videos and we'll start working towards 100 mile an hour. So let's get on this build video. Get the heat going. Now we got it out. Before we start doing any electronics or any of the fun stuff, uh, since we're speed running, I'm gonna go ahead and service the front and rear differentials. I've never even been inside the front and rear differentials yet. So we'll go ahead and lock them up a little bit more. This is the center diff right here. Uh, we already put some silicone earplugs in here. Uh, it's pretty locked up, but we were still wheeling when we were hitting 70, so we might want to even lock it up even more and make it almost like a center spool so the front and rear tires get the same amount of power all the time and it doesn't want to wheelie or do anything weird like that. So we're going to go ahead and open up the front and rear diffs and see what we got going on. It took forever to get into. Finally. Okay, these boots are coming off. These boots are no longer part of my truck. Finally, what the hell kind of differential is this? Doesn't look too dirty in there, so we're just gonna go ahead and add a silicone earplug on top of the stock fluid in there so it doesn't completely lock it up.
Oh, greased up. We got the front end all put back together. I'm pretty sure I didn't forget any screws or anything. We're gonna go ahead and open up the back diff. Uh, I'll just do that off camera. If you couldn't tell, that was the first time I ever took about, apart the front. So the back looks about the same. We basically just gotta unscrew everything to get to the diff. So once I get into the diff, get back on camera and we'll add some earplugs. We got it all put back together and all the differential serviced. So now we're gonna move on to electronics. Here's uh, where the stock ESC is mounted. We're just gonna go ahead and try and make the XL2 be able to mount on top of here. Drill some holes and put some mounting tape so there's screws and mounting tape holding it together. To fix the XLX2, we're going to have to clip this plastic off, clip that plastic off, make it as flat as possible, and then we're going to find some plastic and we're going to build this out flat so this whole platform's flat. We'll go ahead and Use some plastic epoxy to glue that, and then it'll be a good ESC mount for the XLX2. I got a bunch of squares made up that I'm gonna go cut with my Dremel outside off camera because it's dark out. Um, basically, I, I have three squares that's going to build up this part so I could get up above this thing because I can't cut that off. So we're gonna build it up, up above that, and then we got this last platform that's going to sit on nicely. Alright, this stuff is super fast drying, so we'll let those two dry. And then we'll keep on stacking. Alright, the plastic's all glued up. Uh, I ran out of double sided tape, so the ESC is going aside until the morning. I'll have to go to Home Depot and get some double sided tape in the morning, but we could go ahead and mount the motor.
Whoa, too much mustard sauce. We got more stuff to mount the ESC. I think we can mount it now. All right, I got the mount all fitted up. So basically we got screws coming in from the top, countersink going through all the plastic. And then in between both these layers, we got screws countersink going up. That's going to screw into XLX2. We just have to add double side tape right here and then double side tape right there. It's basically Reverse sandwich technology. This is some of the most high-tech technology out there for RCs right now. It's the reverse sandwich technology. So we'll go ahead, get this sandwich built. We got the ham, we got the mustard sauce. And of course, we can't forget the pickles. So then it should be good to go after the sandwich technology is complete. All right, we got the stock ESC mount all modified. Good to go, everything's sandwiched up. Nice and secure, it should never go anywhere. I put some holes in the bottom so I could get to the holes that mount the actual XLX2. I don't know if you could see it, but you can fit a screwdriver in those small holes right there and be able to take it back out if I need to. And everything clears nicely. I just might uh, take it outside real quick, grind those screws down a little bit, give it some clearance between the motor and everything. I'm going to start hooking everything back up and then of course we got to solder on the QS8 connectors for the XLX2 and it should be good to test. All right, just finished doing all the settings for the XLX2 on my laptop. Um, I finally have the batteries all hooked up. We're going to turn it on and calibrate it and make sure it works before we put tires on or anything, just in case it tries to take off or do something crazy. So to calibrate it, we do full throttle, then full reverse until it beeps at me and then you just let it sit in the center and let it calibrate the center throttle. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Full throttle. And then full reverse. 
And then center. Think we're all good? Huh. We're not all good. Whoa. This is a tricky receiver, guys. I cannot figure it out. What the heck? Something is not right. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. I have everything unplugged except for the throttle, so... Something is screwed up with this. Okay, I'm just taking out the stock Spectrum receiver and I'm just gonna try out this receiver that came with my Fly Sky Noble that I haven't even used yet. I'm not sure what the range is and stuff, but if it works with the Noble, I might as well as just use my fancy remote. So we got new model, low C. So uh, let's see, RX set and bind with the receiver. Go ahead and turn that on. We bound it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. We'll pull out the bind plug, since we bound it. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and try this whole situation again. There we go, full throttle, full reverse, neutral, yes, screw that spectrum crap, all right, woohoo, now it's actually working, <laughs> we have life, it's alive. And apparently one of my differentials is backward. You move one tire forward and the other one goes backwards. So these gearboxes are perfectly symmetrical. You can flip it either way. Badlands are mounted, everything's going the right direction. And good thing I was in there because I just realized on the rear hinge pin, uh, these are angled and you can flip these one way or another so I was able to flip these around and now my back wheels are perfectly straight, which is great for speed running. All right, we're out on location. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Jeez. Woo -hoo, that is power. A lot of fun. Uh-oh, it's just stopped. Huh, it stopped running. We're back in the shop and I'm super bummed out, guys. I cannot get this XLX2 to work to save my life. Uh, I just got a hold of Castle Creations. I'm just gonna go ahead and send it in, see what they say. Uh, I can't even plug it into my laptop. You see the B-Link has a little error blinking light that I've never seen before. And then 
It can't even communicate with the ESC, so I have no idea what's going on. I even grabbed a different wiring harness from a different XLX2 that I know works and tried using that and still nothing. So possibly the circuit board inside got fried. So we're just going to send it into Castle and hopefully it's under warranty and they replace it and everything. So for the meantime, we're just going to steal this XLX2 out of the saw blade limit list. This broke the small scale off-road speed record. So we're just going to go ahead and borrow that while this one goes way off to Castle Creations to get fixed. And in the next video, we'll actually have the real maiden voyage for this. And if you're a new watcher, hit that subscribe button, poor favor, and click that bell so you don't miss me shatter this off-road speed record this summer. Oh! Cartwheel world record. Seeing uh, how fast that thing goes and that thing flipping around, I, I can't allow it out here.